Uh, my name is Connie Sosi Gasson. I am Pickery's Pueblo through my mother's side and Navajo on my late father's side, Carl Sosi. Carl Sosi was from Black Mountain near Pinon, Arizona, out on the Navajo reservation. And he was also a jeweler. <laughs> I started in jewelry in early 70s. And in the 60s, I traveled extensively with this group called Up With People. And we traveled all over the world, except for five states. <laughs> And when we were in Scandinavian countries, I used to go into their galleries. And I was very inspired by the simplicity of their jewelry and furniture. So when I came home, I decided to pursue jewelry. I took my classes through the encouragement of my husband, Jerry Gasson at the College of Santa Fe with Nino Padilla, who is a goldsmith here in Santa Fe. And I picked it up right away, soldering and um, doing shadow box type of jewelry, and started winning awards at the Santa Fe Indian Market right away. <laughs> used to turn in all sorts of jewelry. We were only limited to three pieces, but I always used to enter five. I don't know what happened, but those were different times. <laughs> I have always been interested in teaching jewelry. My children used to watch me work on jewelry here at the house. And like I said, David used to peek over my shoulder or on the side here and he would say, Mom, can I play too? I guess to him it just looked like I was playing, having fun. And so, you know, since then, all my children just picked it up. They just decided that that was one thing that interests them. And also, I have taught jewelry at the Eight Northern Indian Pueblos Council to adult students. And we used to uh, have a classroom at San Juan Pueblo. From there, we moved to Powaki. And I taught classes in a little tiny adobe classroom. And again, adult students. And it was always packed. And I stressed the basics and safety. There was a development of the Po Arts in Powaki. And we had jewelry classes there in a really tiny little adobe classroom. And since then, it's grown to a larger classroom, which I was very instrumental in helping uh, to develop the jewelry area, the soldering areas, uh, the casting area. You know, I was asked to help with the ideas, how things should be set up. One thing I always stressed was just keep it simple, the KISS method, you know. <laughs> and I always stress keep your jewelry clean. I just um, would like to encourage the students to do what you want to do in jewelry. It doesn't matter what types of materials you work in. It really doesn't matter because our creator gave us everything from rocks to glass to trees to all types of things in our land. And anything your mind can make, do it. Don't let, put any limitations on you. Or don't let anybody put limitations on you as well. Just use any materials that are provided to us. And I think that's why my children have done other things like their works are very progressive. They just have really gone beyond. <laughs> and I'm glad for them because 
At times, I did jump the fence in jewelry. I was afraid to because I always had these limitations on, set on me. Don't do this. Don't do that. You're not allowed to, you know, put turquoise with this and that. And, you know, to me, whatever the great spirit, our creator, provides for us, just do what you feel comfortable doing. But I always tell my students and my children, always respect what already has been created. Don't be afraid to try some new things. Get into fashion. That's what my sons always say, especially David. He uses the body as a palette because you can display your jewelry at the art shows and people come and look and it looks nice in the showcase, but once you put it on, you know, it's, it takes a completely different look on the body because that's where it's going to go. Yes, I do traditional work, but I'm always trying to create something different. And I do stick to the same things more or less, tufa casting, because I'm good at that. I'm good at tufa casting. I was one of the first women who started as a woman in tufa casting. When I was a teenager, oh, not really a teenager, I'd say maybe about nine or ten, my parents used to take my sister, Judy, and I out to the Navajo Reservation every summer. And we used to watch my aunts weave these huge Navajo rugs. They would herd the sheep. They would shear the sheep. They would card the wool and spin it and dye it through the whole process. And as children, we would watch. We were, sh we, we were shown how to um, herd sheep. <laughs> We, I used to herd sheep and chop wood and, you know, then we would go visit my uncle, Thomas Sosi, out in the Navajo Reservation. And he would use the actual bellows. He had a little place on the floor in his huge hogan. And he would do a lot of tufa casting. The, I think the music part comes from my dad. He used to sing Navajo songs all the time to us when we take trips out to the Navajo Reservation or to Albuquerque or to Pickery's Pueblo, wherever we may be going. My dad would be singing all these Navajo writing songs. And then when we were in the house, he would sing to my sisters and myself the corn grinding songs. And I think that's why I do the corn pendants is because we would grind the corn on the matates, and my dad would be singing to us. When I started out, I was both Navajo and Pueblo, <laughs> like I am today, and the Navajo jewelry influenced me a lot, and the Pueblo designs influenced me a lot, because my mother, at that time, years ago, used to embroider she used to embroider in months cloths, this type of material. And I would see her embroidering all these beautiful Pueblo designs. So I think that was instilled in my mind. As a Navajo jeweler as well, I really you know, appreciated the um, old traditional Navajo style, like the conchos. I used to make concho belts out of sheet silver years ago. <laughs> God, it makes me sound so old, but it's true. I enjoyed sitting there and, you know, pounding out, stamping all these old type traditional concho belts. It was difficult in the 70s, early 70s, when I made jewelry. There weren't too many women that were doing jewelry. 
There was a few, but you know, I used to get the male jewelers coming to the booth and they'd say as loud as they can, you didn't make that, your husband made it. Uh, no, I don't think so. That just encouraged me more. And, you know, I could have stopped. I could have just, you know, ran away and not continued making jewelry. But it really made me want to keep going and striving. I always tell my children, don't be afraid if someone's copying your work, and they do. They do. It's all right. It's okay. Because what we're doing is, I always tell my kids, you're setting the trend. And they are, both in the native world and the non-native world. Because I know that Wayne used to come up with these fantastic pieces of necklaces, and now you see them all over the place. We all have our own styles in, in jewelry making. Mine tends to be traditional, the flair of Navajo and Pueblo designs, and I more or less basically have stuck to that. I'm more known for my tufa cast corn pendants and ladder, Kiva ladder pins. The children, David, you know, he has this completely you know, different style. I always, you know, he makes dazzlers. I mean, wow. Jerry Jr., the oldest son, he sticks to the Navajo traditional style, but he also does, has been doing a lot of, you know, different types of jewelry. And because he is military, um, the American colors would be red, white, and blue. He does red, white, and blue earrings and necklaces and made out of pearls and shells and coral and Afghan lapis. And Tazba, she knows how to make jewelry, um, but I think she's going into the museum part of the business. We, as artists, are keeping this whole universe moving. Seriously. That's why we were created and put here. So we can keep this whole universe evolving with the ideas. When I was asked to be a native, native treasure, I was in shock. I thought, whoa. <laughs> When I was asked to be a native, native treasure, I was in shock. I thought, whoa. <laughs> I couldn't believe they asked, you know, why me? You know, I mean, I'm just me, <laughs> Connie Sosie Gasson. <laughs> but I was very honored, very honored that they chose me. And I just feel that I'm just very grateful to be chosen as a native treasure. I think it really speaks for itself. And I appreciate it deeply. Thank you. Ahiech and aho. I couldn't believe they asked, you know, why me? You know, I mean, I'm just me. <laughs> Connie Sosie Gasson. <laughs> But I was very honored, very honored that they chose me. And I just feel that I'm just very grateful to be chosen as a native treasure. I think it really speaks for itself. And I appreciate it. Deeply. Thank you. A hitch and a hole.